Hiya. <laughs> I, I'll just start. Um, right, basically, like, for the last five years, ever since I left uni, um, I've been doing the same job. Uh, I've been working in uh, accounts. <laughs> <laughs> or admin. And it's, it's something like that. They gave me like a computer and a stapler, you know, little clues, but nothing that led me to a conclusion. <laughs> it's the kind of place, like, you might have worked somewhere like that. Yeah, I'm going to get you on board, don't worry. Um, it's the kind of place, right, where there's only really like two acceptable topics of conversation you can have. You can either talk about the lottery uh, or cancer. <laughs> as though they're the only viable ways out. But basically, like, what I was thinking, like, there's nothing else for me to do. There's nothing else out there. Like, our entire economy now is just the service industry. Like, that's all it is. We don't produce or make or have anything that anyone wants. All we've got is the service industry. It's just our economy is basically people sitting around in a meeting room discussing ideas and no one's listening because there's biscuits. And it's, like, it's the best one we had, though, isn't it? It's better, than, it's, like, it's better than, like, farming or mining. Well, it's easier anyway, but... <laughs> like, the only problem is there's no room for the working class because they'd just say something stupid and eat all the biscuits, wouldn't they? But... <laughs> I thought of that before the riots. <laughs> Clever. Who'd have thought they'd get so angry, eh? The poor. Um... <laughs> But like, I think like, the, the only ones that are kind of doing well out of this situation are the Chinese, aren't they? And they don't really eat biscuits. <laughs> They'll just wait to the end of the meeting and get a little fortune cookie with an invoice inside. <laughs> yeah. How sweetly ignorant, that bit. Um, yeah, no, who's your favourite at working? Who's your favourite person at working? You know working, I've, I've, I've been talking about it, working. <laughs> like, who's your favourite? It's popular now, isn't it, working? Sugar. He's my favourite, he's probably the best, isn't he, Sugar? At working, because he's got a show about working where people work for him, you know the one. And, like, you get to watch and you go, oh, she's not as good at working as, as, as that lad. <laughs> and he's got there now, he just did one with kids, but I don't really understand what the point of that was. But, you know, like, working, you know working. Sugar. Because uh, you, don't, you don't get to see what he's actually doing, because it's too important whatever he's doing, you know. But he's wearing a suit, so you know he's working. And like the only bit you get to see, right, in the uh, in the opening credits, uh, not a lot of people know this. I read this on the internet. In the opening credits, where there's the bit uh, where he's in a helicopter reading the Financial Times. That's about all you get. But that's because um, he's got to be airborne for like 18 hours a day uh, for like tax reasons or something. <laughs> and Philip Green, you know uh, Philip Green. He sleeps in a big converted shoebox in the Oxford Circus Top Shop, because then he can declare himself as goods and he doesn't have to pay income tax. <laughs> and Roman Abramovich, you know, Roman, he lives on a yacht, doesn't he? Because if he gets, uh, if he goes on land, he might get arrested because he's a criminal. And... <laughs> I kind of had to, I kind of had to, like, ruin the delivery of that one, because I had to put an inflection like I've written a question mark. Because... <laughs> Because he's a very litigious man, and I, I really don't have very much money at all. <laughs> but you think, like, even though it seems like quite cruelly unfair now, like, we still have it better than we've ever had it before. Because you think, like, a hundred years ago, right, we were just an obedient mass. Like, people just did whatever they were told. And, like, I don't know, there's this film footage from World War I that I kind of think encapsulates where we lost our innocence. You know the one of, like, all the men being put on a train, and they're being sent off to, uh, to the coast to go and fight in France or wherever. And the thing is, like, they're all smiling and waving their hats. Like, you know, like they're happy. And like, they weren't being arrogant. They didn't know how bad it was going to be. But... <laughs> like... In those early days of media, you know, like, that is the only way the ordinary man had to communicate with the wider world, wasn't it? They only had one thing, they had the hat. Because if you're happy, you'd wave your hat. And then if you're sad, you'd like put your hat there. Or hold it there. 
And the rest of the time, you'd just wear a hat, wouldn't you? <laughs> then we had VE Day, and everyone threw the hat in the air. Don't have any more. Uh, but yeah, like now, like because nowadays, isn't it? You got the Twitter. You notice that you got Twitter and Facebook. You notice that comedians like to point that out. Just get, just make sure you're all, you're all, you're all aware. Everyone's aware. Yeah, Facebook. You know, because um, uh, like when they had the Iranian student protest, it's quite common now. But that was like the first uh, like protest movement that was started by Twitter. It could just be started like that easily. Uh, you know, just have like like let's smash the state. Lol. <laughs> oh, uh, And then underneath, underneath you'd have uh, right underneath you'd have uh, President Ard, um, you'd have President Arj um, Arj uh, um, Arj President Arj uh, what Arj uh, what um, what that's not that's nothing <laughs> um, it's like I'm a, I'm a, I, yeah no it's like I'm a dinner jack, isn't it right so underneath you'd have underneath you'd have President Ahmadinejad likes this. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, would he? I knew that needed more work, but then... All right, that'll do. Bye.